What's up everyone, Derek here with a closer look at the Pokemon Sword and Shield Isle of Armor release date trailer, as there's a lot of new things to see, at least as far as gameplay is concerned. As far as new elements or new things to really talk about, there's not a whole lot, which is why I'm doing a video more like this rather than a full analysis, because I still want to talk about it, but there's not a lot of details to point out that we don't already know. There's a few things in here which I'll include, and of course I'll be giving my thoughts along the way, but nothing that warrants a full analysis. Analysis. And right off the bat, we have Slowbro here, Galarian Slowbro. Our first real look at it, as we can see where the shelter attached this time, its arm, giving it a bit of an arm cannon, so it's going full Samus for us. And uh, we got a bit more about it. It's a poison and psychic type, which is not too surprising, as that was slow poke as well for Galarian, for the Galarian form. It also has the new ability Quick Draw and the new move Shell Sidearm, which only it can learn. It poisons the opponent and does physical or special damage based on which does the more damage, which is a pretty cool idea and uh, should make Galarian Slowbro one to look out for for a lot of people. We'll have to wait and see, but let's go ahead and wake this fella up. Uh, he's sleeping long enough. Let's see. There he is. Now he's awake. And we get us, where we get a better look at the dojo. Uh, where we can even see Cup Fu right there. It's like, Cup Fu is part of this big dojo. And that's, I guess, the big draw of it all. And, uh, yeah. We're heading in there. And of course, we got our giant tree from the uh, Frozen Tundra expansion pass. So we're going to get a little bit of both, even though this is only the release day trailer for Isle of Armor. But I mean, it makes sense to show off as much as you can, get people excited for the expansion pass as a total. And if we go back here, we get another look at Mustard, the happy old guy with the crazy eyebrows. Uh, unless I put his eyebrows and hair have combined. Either way, he's uh, our master at the dojo. And uh, get a bit more of this area where, of the Isle of Armor, I should say, not this area, where uh, we're running around, we have our new uniform, and of course, as we mentioned before in a previous analysis, still going to be items to collect thanks to this Pokeball, and we can see one of the towers in the area where Cub Fu can be trained. If you go through a tower, once you complete that tower, Cub Fu will uh, evolve into that style of Urshifu, which we'll get into a bit here. So let's just go ahead and continue on where we see more of the bike that allows you to go on water, uh, that is still around. Then we have some interesting uh, particles back here. Not exactly sure what they're doing. we just go a little quick, but yeah, hard to say exactly what all that is. But hey, we got some more of the Icicle Penguin Pokemon hanging out. Nothing too crazy. And there's our, another look at uh, Peony, who is like the main NPC of Frozen Tundra, kind of your mustard of this one, who is the leader of this expedition you seem to be part of in the Frozen Tundra. And of course, we start getting some new Pokemon that were not in the original, as we're getting 200, 100 for each uh, expansion to round out that Pokedex. So we got Absol here, got uh, Luxray, of course, we got to look at Urshifu in his rapid style form, which is a water fighting type. And I believe this one is supposed to be his other form, which is single strike style, which is a fighting and dark type. So yeah, that was our little introduction. Let's dive into it, where we first arrive, if we go back, it in uh, the Isle of Armor. And uh, right off the bat, we have Avery right there waiting for us. Now, if you, it is possible to meet Avery and Clara in the main game if you've uh, played it at all. You get to your Galarian Slowpoke, and uh, it sort of gives you an idea of what you're going to do. But hey, they're going to be joining you for the Isle of Armor as well. And uh, they're, they're exclusive to the version you pick. So I believe Avery here is for the shield, while uh, Clara is for sword. So let's go ahead and continue on. And get more of an aerial view of the Isle of Armor, where we have the dojo in the center. We have the water tower over here. And let's go ahead and call this the dark tower over here. Single strike and uh, rapid strike movements. Um, and that's where you'll you know go pick a tower to go through. And that's the ones you'll actually be able to evolve into Urshifu. So let's go ahead and continue on. And we got even more Pokemon. We got Tauros. We got Scyther. We have uh, Drudagon, I always forget his name, along with uh, Loudred and Wismer. We got these little guys. You can see Wismer a little better over there. Also have a Woobat, I believe that is, over there. No, it's not a Woobat. It's a... Oh, I don't... 
I'm blanking on his name. I, I only just caught sight of him. But uh, yeah, one of the other bat Pokemon. I think from Gen 5, I want to say. Maybe maybe it's the actually it might be the evolved form of Woobat, which I believe is Swoobat. That's what's throwing me off. I don't use Swoobat that often. Either way, we'll continue on. We got Sandial, of course, which is always one of my favorite ground dark types. He's a great Pokemon. And we got uh, Tangrowth in here. We got Oranguru uh, showing up from Sun and Moon. A uh, lot of variety already. Of course, Executor. We have both Poly Toad uh, over here and Poly uh, Whirls, I believe. And these don't look like, yeah, their arms are too thin for Poly Wrath. But still, you got the Polys in here. So that's cool. Of course, Wailord. Which, actually, if we go back to Wailord, uh, it just shows how much of the sea you can explore in this area. Because you can still see the Single Strike style uh, tower as well as the dojo. And there's going to be a bit of water to explore. So, cool stuff. Of course, run into Kangaskhan, Buffalant, Lycanroc, Emolga, all kinds of Pokemon. He even got Mien Fu, or is that Mien Chao? I forget. I, again, I have not used that Pokemon a ton, so try to remember it. Fletchling, Dragalge, and here's a wild scene. We actually have three, let's see, three uh, Galarian Slowpoke taken off like crazy. They are just booking it, and... Uh, don't know what's going on there, but uh, Slowpoke seem to have a pretty big, or at least somewhat of a big role in this one. But uh, yeah, that's that's wild. Anyway, continuing on, we have this crazy object, uh, which is designed to look like a Kramer ant. It has some sort of water bucket on its back that's connected to a rice cooker, and the rest is designed to look like Kramer ant. And if we go forward just a little bit here, he spits out a little ball, which... What is that all about? Well, the D the website actually went into it a little bit more. So it's tentatively been translated as the Cram-O-Matic, and it, it allows you to combine up to four items together to make new items. You get different items based on the items you put into it. So who knows what you can pop in there in order to get something else. Maybe you can put four potions in there and you'll get a uh, max potion or something like that. That's usually how those type of things go. Uh, who knows really how it'll all work out and who knows? I mean, maybe you can put TMs in and get something different or maybe combine Pokeballs. Uh, it's hard to say. So we'll have to see what comes of that. But it's a wild little invention. Also, uh, this is likely in the dojo because we don't really see many other buildings. But of course, we have our switch over here as well. Uh, there we go. And we have this woman here cooking with this giant pot and we don't know if the woman is important or it's just another NPC we don't really see her design anywhere else so she might be a named character it's kind of hard to say but that pot is definitely something to look out for and it even ties into the next scene where the entire dojo is eating around it we see our character right there we see Avery sitting with us we have all the other dojo students as well as some other uh, characters and even Mustard's hanging out behind the pot along with everybody else. Um, but what's key here is that pot, and it ties into a new feature for the Isle of Armor. It's You can make max soup, which is uh, when a, uh, a Pokemon with the potential, so when, a, when you make it, a Pokemon with the potential to dynamite, and uh, <laughs> I'm screwing this up, I apologize. But basically, if a Pokemon that can Gigantamax in it, but it only Dynamaxes when you when you go into battle, they have a chance of becoming a Gigantamax form. So let's say you have a regular uh, a, a Cantonian Meowth, and you want it to be able to be a Gigantamax Meowth. Uh, that is how you get it to be that, or any other one. So you can take your starter, feed them this potentially, and they might have a chance of becoming their Gigantamax form, which is really cool. You don't have to worry about catching a specific Pokemon like that. You can just take the Pokemon that you already have and make it into a Gigantamax form and change it up. So, a really cool feature. And, of course, we get this weird... Weird look from uh, Mustard. He is definitely up to something challenging you. Maybe this is a fight against him. Maybe he's evil. I kind of doubt that, but there you go. And another look at uh, Clara, who's all happy. Interestingly, she's pushing the center uh, button on the Pokeball. You don't really see that too often, but uh, there you go. She, of course, is a poison-type trainer. Uh, while 
Avery there is, is a psychic type trainer, and they're both in the gym uniforms. Don't know if they're the gym leaders of those uh, of those gyms that just didn't make it into this session for the uh, for the main game, as far as gym leaders are concerned, but or just students. But yeah, we also get their animation for when they Dynamax their Pokemon, get that uh, little bit of confidence before they put in some effort. And if I had to guess, both of them are going to have Galarian uh, Slowbro as their uh, one of their Pokemon and their main Dynamax Pokemon because, uh, well, he is a poison and psychic type, so it kind of fits. Either way, we have another scene featuring this woman that uh, was cooking for us earlier where we have the option of Bulbasaur or Squirtle uh, tying into all that. Of course, we could get Charmander in the main game, so it makes sense to have this opportunity as well. Likely only able to pick one, which, you know, you got to get both sides if you want to have both Pokemon, so all that fun stuff. But it's still, hey, you get you get one of the starters. Again, people might complain that it's another Gen 1 starter, but that's where the love is, I suppose. <laughs> but of course, they have Gigantamax forms as well, as we see both of them. A nice demonstration of Blastoise using his cannons for the first time. And a little bit about these moves. Moves. Uh, Venusaur's Gigantamax move or G-Max move is Vine Lash, which does damage and continues to do damage for four turns to any non-grass type Pokemon. Meanwhile, Blastoise's G-Max move is the Cannonade, which basically just does the same thing, except it doesn't affect, uh, it doesn't do the damage for four turns to non-water type Pokemon. So yeah, there's that element. And we have another scene here with uh, Cl uh, Clara. Basically, this is the sword version of first arriving at the dojo, and Kung Fu is already watching over you, eyeing you up as a trainer, before finally joining you, of course. So we get the whole process of actually training up Kung Fu to get him to evolve, and a better look at both of the uh, towers where you might be able to evolve him into one of the new for his uh, Urshifu forms uh, when he does evolve. Of course, we also have Star Yu over there, which is a cool little addition. And, uh, yeah, better look at that. And, of course, going to be fighting through a bunch of trainers in order to get that far. Got to get the right to evolve him. And it, it is kind of cool you see them bonding as you go on. Or maybe that's all one scene. Hard to say. But here we go. We have our two Urshifu uh, forms. One is uh, the uh, multi-hit form. One is the single-hit form. Uh, so, yeah. And they have a different look for their uh, Gigantamax forms. So Gigantamax single strikes uh, G Max move is one blow and the rapid strike has rapid flow. And both of these can do damage even if the target defends itself. So if they're using protect, uh, they're going to be in trouble. Because also, and that applies to Urshifu's new ability as well, Unseen Fist, which allows you to damage Pokemon that have used protect. Which, uh, yeah, considering that's a, an ability, that's pretty crazy. And a nice addition to what they're capable of. Get a little demonstration of their power as we move on to the Frozen Tundra. Once again, we can see a little uh, Pokeball in the, underneath the tree. Actually, two. One over here as well. Uh, of course, with all of our uh, raid nodes. Got a little cabin in the woods there. And here we get our... Let, uh, new Pokemon for this one, uh, Calyrex, who's kind of the main uh, attraction of this one. Let's say it's the box legendary for this, even though that doesn't quite accurately represent it. But we also have this nice little forest, uh, snowy forest. Again, so many items to pick up. We've got another Pokeball. Um, and continue on. we got Lapras back in the frozen areas. Whalemore over to the side. Nothing too crazy there because we've had Whalemore before. And another idea where it's not all snowy, there are lower areas that you can explore and not have to worry about the snow, which is probably good considering that means, uh, you know, hail. So a little bit more of Peony, he's a very happy guy, but you are going to battle him at one point. And more significantly, we have the return of the Reggies in the Frozen Tundra. Not only our main three, but uh, there's Cryogonal again. Huh. I thought they got into it there later. Actually, interesting thing here is we actually have a graveyard uh, in the area, so I wonder if they'll go into the, po the Pokemon graveyard in the same way as other Pokemon games have. Have to see. 
a bit more. Again, this might be the same area as before as we see the same Pokeball to the side and uh, same kind of Pokemon around. So it's likely a continuation from that scene. More significantly here um, is a... Uh, we see four players running towards this cave, and this is actually part of something called the Dynamax Adventure, which is a game where four players together invest investigate the D Dynamax raid dens. And you can kind of see it as a more almost closer to a raid in an MMO where you're working together and fighting through a series of Dynamax battles in order to take on a bigger challenge at the end, namely the legendaries. We got Mewtwo, Ho-Oh and Lugia, uh, Kyogre and Groudon. Uh, oh, I'm blanking on the names. Palkia and Dialga. Uh, of course, uh, you know, all the ones you'd expect. All the box legendaries are showing. More significantly, though, we have a brand new legendary in the form, let's get him here, in the form of, let's see here, Reggie Eleki, uh, in a, the electric type Reggie Pokemon with new ability Transistor. It also has the new move Thunder Cage, which deals damage and traps them in an electrified cage for four to five turns. Joining uh, Reggie Alecki here is Reggie Drago, uh, who is, of course, it's a dragon type with a new ability called Dragon Small, and it has the move Dragon Energy, which does more damage, to, does more damage the higher the HP. I don't know if it's to it or the, the enemy, but I'm going to guess the higher its HP, the more damage it'll do. Potentially. Either way, get to see that little demonstration. And we have even more legendaries, as we have the Galarian forms of the legendary birds. Uh, we have uh, Galarian Moltres here, who uh, is a dark flying type with the ability Berserk and the new move Fiery Wrath that does damage and can cause the opponent to flinch. Backing up from him is uh, Galarian Zapdos, which is a fighting and flying type with the ability Defiant and a new move called Thunderous Kick, which does damage and lowers defense. And finally, there is the Thunderous Kick. And our third Pokemon, of course, is Articuno, Galarian Articuno, which is a Psychic and Flying type with the ability Competitive and the new move Freezing Glare, which may leave the target frozen. Uh, so, nice little callback to its Ice form. But yeah, completely changed their types, all still flying, but changed up the rotation here where Articuno is, uh, you know, effective against Zapdos, who is effective against uh, Moltres, who is effective against Articuno. So a nice little uh, rock, paper, scissors element to the three of them. And just fantastic designs. And yeah, that is the main thing zone here. We have, of course, shocking events happening. Look at that. He's completely shocked. But I, I, I kid, but it's great to have them actually emote. I and mean, they did that in the main game, but it continues on. Of course, we get our Gigantamax forms for our starters as well. More training with Cub Fu and seeing our Urshifu. And here's another big one. So for the Frozen Tundra expansion, you can actually return to uh, Winden to take on the Galarian Star Tournament, which, if you see here, features double battles. And you'll do multi-battles against various characters from the story. So it's a chance to uh, take on these two again at the same time, which, uh, yeah, that'll be... Uh, something and your partner is of course hop uh, i like the change with you being the champion of uh you know how your outfit is uh covered in the sponsors really shows how far you've come at least uh, get get all that aspect and who knows maybe you'll actually be able to change up what your outfit is during these battles although notably hop is not in his uniform or in a, yeah in his challenger uniform so he's sort of like a I guess maybe it's more of an exhibition, so who knows in that aspect. But it's also been shown that Marnie will join you for these double battles uh, in a separate screenshot. So yeah, you'll team up with certain characters and you'll battle other characters in double battles and it could be a pretty fun extra mode uh, to, to enjoy. Otherwise, it's just more Pokemon to enjoy and uh, getting a sense of what... Both of these expansion passes have to offer. Nothing too much beyond that. Like I said, it's not really worth a full analysis because it's all kind of out there and said and we've got our looks at both areas. 
So yeah, it's just cool that they're coming and of course we are going to get the Isle of Armor on June 17th where we'll take a lot more uh, of a look at what it's doing, what it can do, play it, review it maybe, and uh, see if it's worth it. We'll see if we get an early code or not. I honestly have no idea for DLC. I'm going to guess no, but hey, we can experience it together. But yeah, what do you guys think of the Isle of Armor uh, DLC as, lo as well as Crown Tundra? And are you excited for its release on June 17th? Let us know in the comments, and of course be sure to subscribe to Game Explained for more on Pokemon and other things gaming as well. Until next time, bye!